What's going on people? Welcome back to another video. My name is Hugh Izzy and you're watching Paper Talk. We are back again bright and early on a Thursday morning to go through the latest breaking news for NS and see exactly what's making the headlines in the back pages of the most fraudulent publications available to man. We buy them so that you don't have to. Love to your mothers. I hope you're doing well and looking after each other in these turbulent times. We're all we've got people. I want to say a massive shout out to the newest members of the Fraud Gang Members Club. You are massively appreciated and helping this channel to keep growing. This is the fastest finger of the Fraudification Squad from yesterday and this is your commenter of the day. If you do want to be featured, all you've got to do is have the first comment of the video or the most liked comment on the video. We've got five fraudulent publications to be going through today, including The Guardian, The Daily Star, The Daily Express, The Daily Mirror and The Daily Fail. It's daily like Thompson, it's daily like Paper Talk. Let's get down to it. This is And I'm delighted to announce that today's video is sponsored by none other than OneFootball, the perfect app to keep you up to date with all the live scores, stats from all the leagues around the world, updates from your favourite clubs, articles from your favourite writers, and all the transfer news and rumours that your heart could possibly need. There is also, right now, an exclusive option to watch selected Champions League and Europa League qualification games. That's right, live games on the app. Make sure you do check it out. There is a link in the description box below. Let me know what you think. And we're gonna to start today in the back of the Daily Express who say fans are shut out again as their hopes of getting back into top flight games from the start of October suffered a massive blow yesterday with Boris Johnson revealing that the games which were set to be pilot tests and allow spectators back in are going to have to be reviewed and pushed back. Manchester United, Tottenham, Arsenal had all expressed an interest in allowing a small number of fans back into their opening games this weekend but those plans have had to be shelved with the new rule of six coming into play. The Daily Mail say sports one billion pound crisis this is focusing on the financial implications of the fans return being in tatters after Boris's clampdown and the financial black hole could force many clubs out of business. Major sports all over the country are contemplating their future and this cannot go on for much longer it really doesn't seem financially viable for most and though you may well see the elite clubs still spending money during the transfer window most are going to have to think twice about how they go forward from here and it is indeed that which Jurgen Klopp is alluding to here Klopp has a pop Jurgen Klopp turning the spotlight on Chelsea and Manchester City over their transfer spending last night. Uh, he said, We live in a world at the moment with a lot of uncertainty. For some clubs, it seems less important how uncertain the future is. Owned by countries, owned by oligarchs, that's the truth. We are a different kind of club. Let me know your thoughts. Chelsea, obviously, splashing the cash this window, spending about £200 million so far, and we're expecting more. And on the back of the star, we have a picture of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Donny van der Beek, and Manchester United's captain, Harry Maguire. The title is saying, Kiss it goodbye, big Premier League kickoff in just two days' time, with Gary Neville telling Manchester United to spend or face more title misery. We've also got a little update on the Jadon Sancho story, so we'll be getting to that shortly. On the back of the Daily Mirror, it is a continuation of the sad news for football fans that football's still not coming home. Fans left frustrated as COVID surges, and they face an even longer wait before being able to return to stadiums. We've also got United, they stand still. The dread Devils, uh, Gary Neville saying Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has no chance of catching the top two unless United give him the support. They haven't signed the players he clearly needs. Uh, Donny van der Beek clearly not enough for Gary Neville. Newcastle have criticised the Premier League after it rejected Amanda Staveley's Saudi-led takeover of the club. Mike Ashley is extremely irritated at everything that's been going on and he's considering taking legal action against the Premier League for blocking the Saudi Arabian-led takeover of the club. Club executives seeking legal advice as they explore ways of forcing the Premier League to permit a £300 million buyout that Ashley maintains 
masters had no basis for failing to approve let me know your thoughts in the comment section below a newcastle statement read newcastle can confirm that the premier league has rejected a takeover bid by pcp capital partners the rubin brothers and the public investment fund of saudi arabia based on its owners and directors test this conclusion has been reached despite the club providing the premier league with overwhelming evidence and legal opinions that the pif is independent of the saudi arabian government the club and its owners do not accept that the premier league and richard masters have acted appropriately the premier league has declined to comment on the statement made by newcastle right the sun is beating down on me and i can't actually see anything there's a lot of transfer news and rumors to be getting through today so we'll kick things off swiftly with aston villa who finally unveiled ollie watkins yesterday 28 million pound signing it has been done for quite some time but fantastic to add him to nottingham forest right back matty cash who they also signed for 16 million pounds sheffield united have signed ollie burke from west bromwich albion for an undisclosed fee chelsea are looking to splash more cash on 28 year old senegalese goalkeeper edward mendy from Ren. they've had a 14 million pound bid rejected already but the second offer which could rise above 18 million pounds with add-ons could well secure his signature the Ren president nicholas holvek saying discussions have started with chelsea for edward mendy he's told us he wants to leave but for now there's no agreement the move will heap pressure on Kepa Arrizabalaga, who doesn't really impress boss Frank Lampard. And Chelsea are also plotting two loan outgoings, with Fikayo Tomori going on loan to Everton and Michi Batshuayi going back to Crystal Palace for the season. Radamel Falcao has said that once his Galatasaray deal is over, he would like to move to MLS and link up with David Beckham's into Miami. Right, this one's dragged on for a little bit, but Manchester United have reportedly made a breakthrough in negotiations with Jadon Sancho shows agent over agents fees and personal terms a fee reportedly still yet to be agreed on between the two clubs and that is obviously the most important thing with Dortmund holding out for the whole 120 odd million euros however there are suggestions that this has been in place for quite some time although it would seem odd to do all those bits without there being legs to this. So perhaps there is more to come regarding Jadon Sancho to Manchester United. I'm kind of expecting it to go through. Fulham have signed Alfonso Ariola on a season-long loan from PSG with an option to buy. Real Madrid have agreed to pay half of Gareth Bell's wages if he can secure a move back to the Premier League this season. He is on £600,000 a week and this would go some way to help shifting a player who is rotting on the benches at Real Madrid. I'm sure he doesn't mind rotting, picking up £600,000 a week. However, uh, he has made his intentions clear and is open to a move back to the Prem. It would suggest here that Real Madrid are so keen to get rid of him that they're willing to pay half his salary, £300,000 a week, to subsidise said move. AC Milan have signed Sandro Tonali from Brescia on a season-long loan for a 10 million euro fee with an option to buy for 18 million euros. He's a very exciting midfielder and I look forward to seeing more of him. Aston Villa are trying to sign another striker despite the fact they've just got Ollie Watkins and Dean Smith's wish list is being topped by Bournemouth's Josh King. Despite the fact that the player, who was close to a move to Manchester United in January, still has his heart set on a move back to Old Trafford. Wolves have signed Vitinho on a season-long loan from Porto with an option to buy for around 18 million euros. They are quite literally becoming Porto. Aston Villa have made an improved bid of more than £15 million for Argentine goalkeeper Emilio Martinez and Arsenal's Mikel Arteta has also done a U-turn on potentially uh, loaning out Rob Holding who was set to make a move to Newcastle. This is because David Luiz is a major doubt for Saturday's clash with Fulham because of a neck problem and Holding is actually now in line to start. Martinez has been the subject of other bids from Villa but the club do seem to be holding out for about £20 million. Pounds. It says here Manchester City are set to join Arsenal in the race for Lyon's midfielder Hussem Oar, which is not great news for Arsenal at least. <laughs> Chelsea's Victor Moses has made a substantial donation in an attempt to save his former club Wigan from administration, anonymously donating £20,000 to help Wigan supporters club to get a step closer to reaching their target of £750,000. Uh, I wish them the best because it is sad to see in these turbulent times uh, clubs falling apart, great institutions 
local communities falling apart and it is going to get worse people i expect other clubs to fall foul of the financial black hole that we find ourselves in right now. Andrea Pillow has turned up at Juventus and has made it very clear that Gonzalo Higuain does not feature in his plans for the coming season and his contract may well be ripped up a year early. Higuain reportedly interested in making a move to MLS to link up with David Beckham's Inter Miami. Right then, that's about it for this time. I'm going to love you and leave you. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying the daily content. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you're new and drop the video a damn like if you breathe oxygen and i'll see you in the next one for now though i've been here with you and this has been a lot of fun peace